This video brought to you by our amazing patrons. Hey everyone, Solar Gray, the cinematic sorcerer, coming at you from part of the hobby hall, and welcome to Rolling Hard. So, you guys clicked on the thumbnail to find out what a tabletop RPG is, and I'm here to tell you it's a really, really fun thing. Now, a lot of people, when they think of role-playing games, they think of one major game. Dungeons and Dragons! And truth, you wouldn't be mistaken in thinking of that. But there are hundreds of different types of role-playing games. Like Call of Cthulhu, Vampire the Masquerade, Innomine, Rifts, Traveler, so many. I could literally give you a 10 minute list of me just rattling off names of different role playing games. However, all of them tend to have a lot of common factors and this is what we're going to talk about today. I like to describe role playing games as organized cooperative games of pretend. OCP. And why? Because it's pretty simple and I like abbreviations. But a bunch of people get together and they decide to tell the story by playing pretend. Now, each game has a lot of different mechanics. Regardless of whatever game you choose, the organized part comes with the mechanics of the gaming system. Sometimes you'll use dice, sometimes you'll use cards, sometimes you'll even do rock, paper, scissors. But all the way across the board, they have common, th common threads that unite them. The easiest way to think about this is, imagine writing an outline to a short story, allowing your friends to create characters for your short story, and then having a game of pretend to really act out the story hopefully according to the outline and the story beats but there's nothing at all that states that that's the way it has to go it can be a really fun time now every game has its own mechanics and its own randomization feature but we'll get to that in future videos the common thread is that we have the writer of the story. This is known most colloquially as the game master. The game master or dungeon master or narrator or storyteller or dungeon keeper is the one who wrote the outline to the story or bought the outline to the story from a store in the form of a module and read it and this is the person that doesn't necessarily have their own individual character because they have to play the villain, the NPCs, or the supporting cast, as it were. Um, the meter maids, the bartenders, the blacksmith, all the people that the rest of the players, known as player characters or PCs, are going to interact with. And of course, the player characters being the people that create their own characters within the rules of the agreed on game, and they can make decisions based on whatever they're inspired by, as long as it's within the confines of the rules of the game. Now, the flow of the game in an RPG is generally pretty simple. We have the game master describing the scenario. After feeling your way through the darkened hallway, you come across an opening and you walk through the opening through what seems to be a curtain of some kind and you walk in to a throne room. It looks deep and long, about 60 feet wide and at least a hundred feet deep and in the middle of it is a giant throne carved from what looks like a single piece of obsidian now when you guys approach it all of the torches come on at once the player characters describing what they would like to do i check it for traps i look for other magic spells 
And of course, the mechanics being applied. Okay, make a perception check. And make an arcana check. And then, the results, i.e. the description of what happens next. Upon your investigation, you find four canisters that reek of sulfur tied together through a hair-thick line of trip wire right at the front of the throne. Looking at this throne room through your wizard's eyes, the air crackles with magical energy. You can see that someone has cast prestidigitation throughout this entire place, but there's something deeper going on with the magical energy. Now, this doesn't seem too exciting on the offset, but this happening over and over and over and over again over the course of a few hours can be very exhilarating and very entertaining. Now, there was a thought a long time ago where people thought that playing these games influenced the children to terrible things. But the fact of the matter is, everyone plays pretend. Everyone started playing pretend when they were children. When we used to be Captain Nemo and the giant squid was attacking us. Or we would climb a tree and call that our castle. This is the same thing, except most of the people that play it don't exactly feel safe climbing trees anymore. <laughs> and of course, these types of games have organizations within dice mechanics or card mechanics, but either way, the organized play or the game mechanics to the game give structure in such a way we're just saying I have a great big gun, well, I have a thermonuclear explosive, can tend to put a damper on things. There are different role-playing games for different genres of storytelling. The most famous being Dungeons and & Dragons, and that's a very Tolkien-esque fantasy game with wizards and elves and dwarves and dragons and even a dungeon every now and then. But there are other games like Call of Cthulhu, which is 1920s deep celestial horror, or Traveler from Mongoose, which is space exploration, and Mutants and Masterminds, of course, where you have superheroes going bang, boom, pop, zap against bad guys. But either way, all of these different games are different flavors and different tones of the playing pretend that are tabletop role-playing games. If you're interested in this, there are many resources online and in regular stores to help you on your way. The Dungeons & Dragons Essentials Kit is a fantastic way to get started, but if you're not really one for fantasy, there are loads of different games at your brick and mortar game store or you can always go on Amazon or find the companies directly with a little bit of a Google search. Of course, the internet is a fantastic place. Now when it comes to playing role-playing games as a hobby or a pastime, there is a lot of work involved. Every dungeon master or game master has to have an understanding of geography and population and of course storytelling and story beats. Over the course of this show, well, we'll be going over different techniques and different tools that you can use to play these games or even help with your fanfic or some of your English classes if you're still in school. So subscribe to the channel and help us out by spreading the word and helping the community grow. And hopefully we can come across all of these things in the wild and have a lot of fun together by playing these games, writing these stories and having these experiences together. But if anybody tells you 
that you can't like the things you like or have these hobbies because of the circumstances of your birth, be it race, religion, creed, gender identity, sexual orientation, your disabilities, or your budget, you can tell them to take any of those cards and put them back in the deck. This is Solar Gray, the Cinematic Sorcerer, and thank you for joining me today on Rolling Hard. And I want to give a hearty shout out to all my patrons. Seriously, guys, without you, we wouldn't be able to do these videos at all. So thank you. You guys get a shout out. Your names are right there in the credits. <laughs>